haven't done one of these video tutorials in a while, so please forgive me if I'm a bit rusty. I'm Michael, the tech librarian here at Montville, and I just wanted to do a quick, quick overview today of our new uh, ebook and the audiobook platform, Libby. Um, this is also our magazine platform now as well, although we still are keeping our subscription to Press Reader. Uh, for those of you who like Press Reader, that is staying. Um, but Libby also has a very large selection of magazines as well. So I just wanted to start off by showing you how you sign up for the service. So I'm here on my computer and I've loaded up uh, LibbyApp.com, which is the website version. Um, this would basically work exactly the same way if you're doing it on your uh, tablet or smartphone. Uh, the interface is pretty much very consistent whether you're in the website version of Libby or the app version of Libby. So let's go ahead and see how we get signed up. So it's a little bit of a different registration process. So um, it starts off by simply asking you, do you have a library card? Now, let me say this. You're, you're going to want to have a library card to register for this service. Um, and you also need to have a library card that is current. So if you do get an error message when trying to input your library card, um, the best thing to do is just give us a quick call. We can look your account up, see if you need a renewal, or see what else is going on to get you to be able to sign up. Keep in mind, you're also going to need, as you'll see in a minute, your PIN number. Now that is uh, established when you created your library card, and it is the last four digits of the phone number you gave us when you signed up for your library card. Um, so sometimes that ha can change. Uh, you know, you might have signed up 10 years ago with your old landline phone, and now you only use a, a, a cell phone. Um, so if you're having issues with your PIN, if it's not accepting it, either try maybe a different number you used to have in the past, or again, uh, please feel free to give us a call and we can pull up your library account and figure it out. So again, the first question is, do you have a library card? We're going to click yes. And then you get a couple different options here to search for a library. Um, honestly, the easiest way is to simply click here, the second option, search for a library. And then the easiest way is to use a zip code. So we'll just use Montville zip code 07045. And then you'll notice the first hit here is uh, Montville Township Public Library. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click that. And now we need to sign in with our card so that we can start uh, borrowing books and audiobooks and everything else. So we're going to click and sign in with my card. And this is where you enter in your library barcode, which is located on the back of your library card. Just put the number in, and every number you see, the whole thing, with no spaces, just the whole number. And then you need your PIN, which, as we mentioned before, is the last four of the phone number that you gave us when you signed up with your library card. And then you're going to click Sign In. Okay, so now we've signed in. And you'll see here's our card. And you'll notice there's two things here. Loan 0 of 10, hold 0 of 5. So at any one time, you can have up to 10 items checked out in Libby. And up to at one time, you can have up to 5 holds active. So just keep in mind those limits while you're using Libby. So we're just going to hit Next. And there is the option to read with Kindle uh, with Libby, which is great. That's something that uh, was not included in Cloud Library. So that is a very nice addition, um, and we'll get into that in just a minute, but we're going to skip that for now. So here we are in our view, and you see there's a whole bunch of different ways that it is you can search and how it's categorized. Now, one thing I want to keep uh, have you keep in mind here is that um, I'm recording this on January 7th, and um, the process of migrating all of the content from Cloud Library, our old system, to Libby um, is not an automatic process. Um, employees at Libby actually have to go in and manually uh, move each and every single file over one at a time, and they have to go, each file has to go through a quick legal review. So um, it is going to take some time to migrate all the content over, 
Um, so right now we have 16,000 titles available. That's going to go up dramatically um, in the days and week or two ahead. But the hope is that by the end of January, all the content from Cloud Library will be fully migrated over and everything that we had in Cloud Library will now be available in Libby. So just keep that in mind. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, let's just see what a book looks like in, the, in this system. So let's say I wanted to borrow the intelligent advisor, investor, excuse me, the intelligent investor. So I click on the cover and we have a couple options. So you can see it's got different tags on it, which you can also search by tags. So this is obviously a nonfiction book. It's concerned with business and finance in particular. So let's say I just want to look at all the finance books in the collection. I could go ahead and click that tag. And then here's all the books in the collection that have that tag. Now again, right now there's only 14 ebooks and six audiobooks. But again, that is because we are still in the process of migrating all the content over. Um, so this, again, will grow significantly in the days ahead. So let's go ahead and go back to the original book we were looking at, The Intelligent Investor. I can also look at a sample. So if I want to read a quick sample of the book uh, before I actually borrow it, you can go ahead and you can look at the first couple pages of the book. And also it will occasionally drop you in like a random, a random place within the book. But the idea is that you can get a sense of what is this book about? Do I like what it's, uh, you know, do I like how the author writes? Do I enjoy what I'm seeing here? So that you can kind of get a taste before you use one of your, uh, your 10 uh, borrows. But let's say we liked what we saw. We're ready to borrow this book. We're just going to simply click borrow right here. And then just to confirm it, we have to click the borrow button here one more time just to make sure we didn't do it by accident. And you can see the loan period is 14 days. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click borrow. And now that we borrowed it, we can go ahead and we can open it. And now we have the entire book. And again, I'm doing this on a computer just because, you know, for the ease of recording. But um, this would work essentially the same on your mobile device. You would simply be using the touch screen with your finger rather than clicking with a mouse like I am here. Now let's go up here and let's look at some of our other buttons here. So here we have sort of a single page or double page view. So, you know, if you're on a smaller screen device, like a smartphone, it might be better to go with the single page view at a time. But since I'm on a big desktop with a 27 inch screen, uh, obviously double uh, column is fine for me. Um, this little A here, this is your appearance button. And so we can do all kinds of different things. We can change the text scale. So that's the size, right? We can make it bigger, we can make it smaller. There's also this button down here that says include accessibility sizes. So if you need an even bigger typeface, check that, you know, just click or touch the slider and you can see we can make those uh, sizes even larger. We also have different lighting options. So like sepia, for example, gives a kind of more of a, a yellowish warm tint. That can be good if you're reading, especially at night, because blue light from your screen can definitely interrupt your sleeping pattern, <laughs> research has shown. So a lot of readers do prefer sepia, uh, just because it's a little bit easier on the eyes, a little bit less white light. But you can play with that. There's also a dark theme where it will turn the background black and the uh, text white instead of the other way around. Um, so that's kind of good maybe, you know, if you're in a low light scenario, um, you don't want to, again, a big bright white light uh, shooting out of your eyes, you can go ahead for the dark theme. Um, so that's appearance. Very important because we do know a lot of readers like larger size type. Um, so essentially, if you're one of our patrons who borrows large uh, print books, the great news is in Libby, everything is a large print book. It's not just a limited number of titles. It's every book in the collection. You can make a large uh, format book simply by playing with the appearance uh, tool here. Next, you'll see we have a magnifying glass. So if we go ahead and click that, you can do a search. So you can search for any term you want. Let's just say like mergers, maybe since this is a finance book. 
And you'll see that every instance where that word comes up or that phrase, if I did multiple words, I have shortcuts now to where that term appears in the text. So if I click here to chapter 15, it's going to go ahead and it's going to highlight it in uh, purple. And it's going to say, here's where mergers appeared in this chapter. So again, a very useful feature, something that's unique to eBooks, obviously. You can't do that uh, uh, you know, with uh, any kind of um, paper book, unfortunately. You can use an index, which definitely helps. But with this, you can search every single word in the entire text. And then finally, you'll notice here we have a bookmark button. So you can go ahead and you can place a bookmark by uh, tapping. In this case, we'd be clicking because we're on a, a desktop, not a um, uh, mobile device. But um, you can go ahead and place bookmarks. So if you want to bookmark a page, a really important page, that you want to be able to quickly go back to, you can go ahead and do that. And then you can also uh, highlight, just like you will with a highlighter, by tapping and holding a word and then swiping left or right. right. Or again, in this case, clicking. So that is sort of your basic reading tools up here. So you can see Libby has a very simple um, layout. It's a very basic idea. I think the focus is on simplicity for a reason. They want to make it as easy to use as possible. Um, let's go ahead and just quickly look now at some of these other buttons down here. So if we click the magnifier, that's our search. So if I do a search for any topic, author name, um, title, this is where we would find it. Um, so if I did a search for Sherlock Holmes, you can go ahead and you can see we have um, some audiobooks here. We have some uh, ebooks here. We have some, you know, other that versions of uh, Sherlock Holmes stories that are adaptations that are not the original story. Like this here appears to be a graphic novel, for example. Um, and then we have even some things that are a little bit more far afield. You know, this is perhaps, you know, it's a murder mystery, it looks like. Perhaps, you know, it's a mystery. It's not a Sherlock Holmes mystery, but... Perhaps if we like Sherlock Holmes, we might like this title. And again, you can always uh, read a sample before you borrow anything. Um, we also have a refine button up here. So if I want to refine my search, like maybe I only want to see audiobooks with uh, Sherlock Holmes, then I get these two audiobooks here. So, and again, very useful if you want to like narrow things down. And there's a whole bunch of other refinements you can put on. You can do audience, you know, if you want to search maybe for juvenile only books, um, you can click on language. So we actually do have a Spanish language uh, collection of Sherlock Holmes stories here um, in audiobook format. So that's kind of neat. Um, and then you can finally search within the results. So I'm in Sherlock Holmes. Maybe I just want to read uh, A Scandal in Bohemia. So I do say on Bohemia, nothing came up. I might have spelled that wrong. I actually have to go back and check. But you can, you can do that. You can go ahead and you can um, search within results. So that's the magnifier. This uh, looks like a building. You click on that. This just kind of takes us back to our home area, um, which in this case is Maine because that's our consortium. And again, you know, maybe I want to look at just teen books. So I click teens. And now we're using a young adult filter, and now we're just seeing uh, young adult books exclusively. There's over a thousand of them in the news section alone. Because remember, um, not only do you get access to our ebooks, you also get access to ebooks that Maine purchased as a collective, and even ebooks that other libraries in our um, consortium purchased. So that's pretty neat. This button here, uh, these three lines, also sometimes known as the hamburger, um, this is just your sort of account information. So here's where I can look at my card and my consortium. If I click on one card here, here's my card. If I click on actions, I can verify, rename it. I can change the colors if you want. I'm not sure why. Or you can even remove the card if you want to. So that's all of your card options. You can also add a second card or a third card. You know, if you're in a family, 
and you want to be able to look at all the borrows in your family or the kid books your kids have out, you can go ahead and add their cards too to make it one simple account. There's uh, help if you need help. Um, there's settings. So these are just more accessibility features. This is where you can uh, select Kindle as where you'd like to read your books if you'd rather read books in the Kindle uh, devices rather than Libby. Um, the one thing with Kindle is, I just have to mention, is the magazines are not available in Kindle. They're only available in the Libby app, so keep that in mind. Um, this stack here, the stack of books, this just shows my shelf. This is what I have um, checked out. Um, we can go ahead and open it again. We can see how much time we have left. And right now we're about 53% through because I skipped ahead, if you remember, with that search. I skipped ahead to... Uh, merger, I think, which was in, I picked on a result in chapter 15. So that's why it's showing 53%, even though I haven't really read that far. Um, we have our actions buttons. You can again here choose to read with Libby. Um, we have manage loan. You can return something early. Let's say you're at your limit of 10 borrows and there's something else you want to borrow. You can go ahead and you can return that early. So that is another useful feature. And then finally down here we have what looks like a clock. And this just shows you when you borrowed something, how long you borrowed it for. Um, and so, you know, this one in this case we borrowed it January 7th. It's due, we borrowed 14 days. It'll be returned uh, on January 21st unless we return it sooner um, with that return early button. So that's a general overview of Libby. That's certainly not every feature and every facet. Um, I highly encourage you if you really want to do a deep dive. Um, on our homepage, we have a full tutorial link uh, under the Libby and the Libby box, right front and center on the homepage. If you click on that full tutorial, it'll take you to a 40-minute video uh, produced by Libby. So that goes into every possible feature and uh, you know bell and whistle of this platform. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative and happy borrowing and we'll see you at the library. Take care. Bye-bye.